I'm Tom Baker, this is Chasing Cars, and this video has a really simple premise. Is the new turbocharged Subaru Outback a better buy than the non-turbo version? Well, we have figured it out over a hardcore week of testing between these two vehicles. We've actually put in the hours and the Ks out there on Australian roads to figure out the actual fuel consumption at the Bowser of these vehicles, not just going off what the trip computer tells us. But we've also put in a whole bunch of road testing in other environments to work out if you should spend the extra $5,000 to buy the Outback XT with the 2.4 turbo instead of the regular Outback with the 2.5 naturally aspirated engine. And the answer may well surprise you. But before we get started, hit subscribe down below. Chasing Cars, honest reviews of your next car. Brought to you by Budget Direct. The reason to make this video is that from 2023, Subaru has added the WRX's 2.4 litre turbocharged four cylinder petrol engine as an option on the Outback here in Australia. And if you're an American wondering, what is this RC talking about? Because you've had the turbo Outback since this generation came out. Well, lucky you, but we've only just gotten this motor because Japan never used to make the 2.4T version of the Outback. But here it is with 183 kilowatts of power and 350 Newton meters of torque, horsepower and pound feet are on the screen now if you prefer that. That's 32% more power and 42% more torque than the non-turbo version. But if you look at it on paper, the turbo drinks almost 20% more petrol than the non-turbo and that's a lot. But does it actually stack up in the real world? Well, let's find out. When we do fuel economy tests here at Chasing Cars, we do them properly, which is to drive the car for a really good road test in the environment that we're testing for. And we refuel the car at the Bowser and calculate the fuel used mathematically. We don't just rely on the trip computer. And that's important because in the case of the Outback, both the turbo and the non-turbo were 7% optimistic on their trip computer. So the cars were using more petrol than the trip computer thought that they were. So what were the results? Well, we did a highway test and an urban test, and I can tell you the answers to that question. When it comes to urban, the XT is actually quite a bit less thirsty. We recorded 10 liters per 100 Ks flat at the Bowser versus 11.7 liters per 100 Ks for the naturally aspirated. And that's how it checks out on the road because this thing just needs so many more revs than the luxuriously torquey turbo, which feels like it's got a better sized amount of power. On the highway though, it's reversed. The XT gave us 8.1 liters per 100 Ks, whereas the non-turbo used a lighter 7.6 liters per 100. There's one further complication though, and that's that the XT requires premium petrol, whereas the non-turbo is happy enough with 91, which is quite a lot cheaper at the Bowser. But how does that check out in terms of your running costs? Well, if you're like a normal Australian and you do 10,000 Ks a year urban, 5,000 Ks a year on the highway, then every year you're gonna spend $3,091 fueling the XT, and that's taking into account the premium petrol, versus $3,100 for the non-turbo. So $9 cheaper for the XT. Well, we've already ascertained that the XT is more frugal than the non-turbo in town. And on the whole, these vehicles will cost you about the same in fuel spend over a normal year here in Australia. But what about the rest of the running costs? Well, surprisingly, the XT ekes out another win here because it's more affordable to service and its service intervals are longer. So the XT will cost you $2,570 to service for five years and 75,000 Ks, or about 3.4 cents per kilometer whereas the non-turbo is gonna cost you $2,670 to service for five years, but only 62 and a half thousand Ks. So just over four cents per kilometer. So especially if you're a buyer that does higher mileage rather than lower mileage, the XT is actually the cheaper vehicle to service, which is quite surprising. And when it comes to insurance, in the last 12 months, the median Budget Direct customer has spent $943 to comprehensively insure a new Subaru Outback. Everybody's situation varies and your premium will vary based on things insurers take into account, like where you live, how you garage the car and your driving history. And both have a five year unlimited kilometer warranty. Probably the least surprising thing you'll learn in this video is that the Outback XT is quicker than the non-turbo. 
We launched them both and we got 7.43 seconds for the turbo and 9.07 seconds for the non-turbo. So the XT is about 20% quicker from zero to 100. That makes sense because it's got a 28% better power to weight ratio, but you'll also be able to deploy the extra speed while overtaking, where the XT feels noticeably faster and more relaxed. But when it came to emergency braking, the results were very similar. The non-turbo required 38.71 meters to stop from zero to 100, while the turbo required 39.39 meters. Keeping in mind, the XT is about 50 kilos heavier. Okay, so when it comes to the driving, there's big differences between these two Outbacks. Let's pull away first in the non-turbo as the engine revs to 3,500 RPM on moderate throttle just to get up to 60 Ks an hour. And that really opens what the experience is like in the non-turbo Outback, which we've spent a lot of time with on chasing cars. We had one as a long-termer, we really liked it, but we commented that it needed more power. And that's the whole reason for the existence of the new turbo. The specs of the non-turbo kind of tell the story. 138 kilowatts of power and 235 newton meters of torque. So it's adequate, especially if you're mainly driving it with just one or two people. But when you start loading the vehicle up with more people, more cargo, it gets stressed out very quickly. And it's relatively modest zero to 100 time really tells the story of that. There's not really excess capacity. And if you want to go faster, this is half throttle. We're revving to four and a half thousand RPM, there's 80. So in terms of refinement, it's just not as strong as the turbo engine. It certainly gets the job done if you really don't care about going quickly or you never overtake people on a country road, then the non-turbo will probably suit you just fine, but it's off the pace, I would say, which is why it's good that the new turbo has been brought in because the ride and handling of the Outback is really quite decent it was mainly the engine that needed an update. But just before we change to the turbo, I think a really interesting exercise is to look at how much noise there is in the cabin with our decibel meter on a moderate throttle accelerating to 60. And that was 67 decibels on really moderate throttle, so no more aggressive than you'd normally use just accelerating around town. And what about at full throttle in the non-turbo? And that was a 73 decibel peak in the non-turbo. Let's check it out in the XT. So we know about the acceleration difference and the fuel consumption difference. What about the refinement? Moderate throttle to 60. 62 decibels. It's a major difference. So just when you're driving around normally, you're not trying to drag anyone off at the traffic lights. You're just driving calmly around the burbs. You're getting 62 decibels in the turbo versus 67 in the non-turbo. But what about at full throttle? That's a 70 decibel peak. So you can see that even at full throttle, the Outback XT is quieter. It's quieter everywhere. And if you're the kind of person that enjoys a little bit of peace and quiet in your motoring day, then the Outback Turbo will start to pay dividends from a very early stage, simply because you're listening to a more relaxed and simply more refined in general engine compared to the 2.5 in the non-turbo version. So what is the engine that we're dealing with? Well, it's also used in the WRX and the WRX wagon here in Australia, and it makes 183 kilowatts of power and 350 newton meters of torque. Identical outputs to the Volvo V60 cross country and very, very close outputs to the Volkswagen Passat Alltrack, which are both kind of the powertrain leaders in this segment. So it's good to see the Outback equal those cars. And really, it solved the Outback's main problem, which was that it was a little bit thrashy and noisy and a little bit slow. And if you kind of value having that additional performance and refinement, this solution just works. But interestingly, it's a different engine, so it's got different hardware, different weight, and it's slightly differently located in the engine bay. And Subaru has taken the opportunity to give the Outback a bit of a retune as a result. So the turbo has a different rear suspension tune, and the front end is subtly different as well to compensate for the differences in engine hardware. And it has really settled this car's turn-in. 
which is something that is at times a little bit jiggly and wayward in the non-turbo. It's kind of got this secondary effect where you turn it in and the car, the body sort of moves half a second later. That effect is interestingly settled in the turbo. This is still no sports car. And one great thing about the Outback is that it is set up to be deliberately soft and plush and comfortable, which I think is what most people actually want out of their everyday family motoring most of the time. This car makes road trips so relaxing, everyday driving in the burbs more comfortable because it just soaks up crappy roads and imperfections so incredibly well. That does mean it's not particularly dynamic. You're not gonna go apex hunting in this. This is not a recreation of um, Outback XTs of old that were also pretty sporty. It's just a comfy, soft car with a good amount of power and torque much better than the non-turbo version of the car. A lot of the things are shared between the two of them, including the safety systems, which are voluminous in content. We've got adaptive cruise control, lane keeping assist, blind spot monitoring. Uh, we've got a reversing camera, a front and a left side camera, but doesn't go all the way around, which is a bit confusing. And we have a driver monitoring system, which is very ambitious. You can turn it off, but anytime your eyes are not on the road, you're being tracked by this little window down here and the car can be very demanding at you to get your eyes back on the road, which is of course where they should be, but just pointing out that cars are getting more and more advanced in that way. And additionally, a significant consideration if you like to tow is that the Outback Turbo can tow 2,400 kilos, which is a nice lift on the 2,000 kilos of the non-turbo version but the actual towing capacity is just one thing. I always thought 2,000 kilos was pretty ambitious for the non-turbo Outback. We have tested it on the channel, you can watch that. But this car has so much more torque, it's going to make towing not effortless, we're not talking a huge towing capacity, but easier. And we're looking forward to doing a future tow test on this car in uh, just a short time on the channel as well. If you want to be a Subaru Outback expert, you're going to need to know how to tell the difference between the turbo and the non-turbo. And it makes sense to start at the back because if you're in the non-turbo, you're going to be seeing the back end of the turbo a lot. It starts with the XT badge. That's the biggest giveaway here on the back. If this was my car, I would probably debadge it because that way you wouldn't be able to tell that you have the bigger engine. And I think that's a bit of a flex. Underneath this rear apron here, the turbo models have two exhaust pipes rather than just one. And if you follow me up the front end of this Outback Sport, finished in this rather fetching autumn green color, the other way that you can tell the turbo is here at the front because it does have a subtly different LED fog light pattern when compared to the non-turbo version. And now you're an Outback train spotter. To make this a fair test, I've brought along the Outback in identical specs. The only difference is the engine. Now, if you know your Outbacks, you'll know that this is an Outback Sport, technically an Outback XT Sport. And that means that we're running with a more sort of lifestyle and adventure focused Outback. We've got these neoprene-like water repellent seats inside, a bunch of green stitching, green highlights outside, but still heaps of great features, including this 11.6 inch touchscreen, with navigation, wireless Apple CarPlay, and wireless Android Auto. We've got heated seats, front and rear, which would be great in winter. But if you want to take the next level of premium appointment, you'll have to go for the Touring model, which is a little bit more expensive, four grand dearer than this car, but you're getting a sunroof, Nappa leather with seat cooling, which is a great feature, Harman Kardon premium audio, and a few other bits and bobs like driver's seat memory, which are nice to have. And I personally think the Touring is worth $4,000 more than the Sport, but I've really enjoyed this spec of Outback over the last week of testing as well. Now, this isn't meant to be a full review of the Outback. You can catch one of those on the Chasing Cars YouTube channel. In this video, we're really thinking about whether it's worth spending more on the turbo engine because it is five grand more than the naturally aspirated car. Five grand certainly isn't nothing, but it's still within that realm of where you'd have to strongly consider it if you were thinking about buying an Outback. But that being said, we will take a quick look at the back seat first. If you only need two rows of space, the Subaru Outback continues to be such a great car for Australia because it really suits the kinds of roads that we drive on, no matter which engine you choose. And in terms of seating people in the back, it's just cavernous. It's a pretty big car, but it also has a pretty big interior. And you can see that for myself, at six foot, I've got excellent headroom, amazing knee room behind my own driving position, good toe room, and you could get someone in the middle seat if you had to. Plus you've got air vents, 
USB charge points, or although only one for the car is a USB-C, three others are the old style USB, and this sport grade also has heated seats in the back. While we're here, it's also worth noting that sadly, you can't get the turbo engine with the base model Outback. You have to go to at least a sport or the more expensive Touring in order to unlock the option of that turbocharged engine. Just like the interiors, the boots on the turbo and non-turbo Outback are identical. Now from the sport grade up, you get a power tailgate with a kick to open function as well, which is great. The door gets out of your way silently and quickly and it reveals 522 liters of space. So this wagon has a big practical boot. You've got a retractable blind, you've got cargo hooks. You can drop the rear seats remotely. They drop straight down real quick. You've got some netting, 12 volt socket, and then under this boot floor, just like a Passat all track, you've got a full size spare, which is absolute peace of mind to have here in Australia. And that's becoming a really rare feature. And then when you're done with the boot, you've got a control up there to close it, or you can close it and lock the car at the same time. So right at the beginning of this video, I asked a clear question. Is it worth it to spend the extra five grand on the Outback Turbo versus the non-turbo? Well, the answer for me is yes, it is worth it. Now the turbo isn't really saving you any money. It uses about the same amount of fuel price-wise as the non-turbo and servicing wise, okay, you save a hundred bucks over five years. But what you're getting for your five grand is a vehicle that costs no more to run than the non-turbo, but is so much more relaxing and enjoyable to drive every day. Now, I read a lot of customer forums and owner forums, and I love seeing what you guys have to say. But I've got to say, I disagree with the sentiment that you can't tell the difference with the Outback XT around town. After driving the non-turbo for the best part, of 500 Ks over the last week, I can tell you, you definitely notice the girthy torque of the XT Turbo in every situation. This car is quieter, which we've measured in this video. It's more relaxed. It accelerates far more effortlessly than the non-turbo. For me, that's worth five grand, especially if you're planning to keep the car for many years to come rather than switching over in maybe two years. Of course, I'm very keen to know your opinion, so please let me know down below in the comments whether you think it's worth splashing out for the XT compared to the naturally aspirated Outback. While you're down there, hit subscribe and the notification bell if you enjoy breakdowns like this video. And as always, thank you for watching Chasing Cars.